some kind of theoretical approach uh, which is um, explained in Nelson book and as well as trying to cover some theoretical portion of a McGregor book. So this is a kind of continuation of the lecture 9. Okay? In lecture 9 basically if I, if I, if I want to recap some of uh, the part of those lectures so basically we are uh, doing the uh, calculation relating to that how we can calculate theoretical cutoff points for them. Here we are trying we are trying to explain that understanding a little bit further okay and uh, basically we are trying now to to that how actual cutoff points are achieved. Okay. Those discussion is just relating with the theoretical cutoff points. Okay. Now we are trying that what will what will, what kind of effects are produced you know in a beam uh, when the bars are cut up. Okay. So basically from this basic equation which is written like here that the tension force in a steel you know the tension for a force in a steel is uh, equals to what is equals to uh, you know mm, bending movement divided by uh, the lever arm this basic equation which is written like here, here this is this best this is the basic equation you we all know the this equation that area of steel is equal to moment divided by f y into d minus a over 2 clear now this D minus A over 2 is basically what it is lever arm, clear? Lever arm is what you know, we all know the stress distribution in a rectangular beam, you know, that at the lower portion there is tension force in the steel and in upper portion there is a compression in and this compression is basically at a distance of a over 2 clear and uh, this whole thickness is basically you know mm, a clear and uh, distance from the neutral axis to uh, to the to the to the centroid is known as C. So this is basically the flagship theory, you know, and you must need to recall the design of rectangular beam. That what is the basic mechanics? How they um, design a rectangular beam? So the distance between these compression and tension is called J D. Clear? And the distance from the half fiber to the of the beam to the tension center is called D. Clear? So, if you want to obtain this distance, this distance will be equal to D minus A over 2. So, lower arm is equal to D minus A over 2. So, what is the moment? You know, from this equation, you can easily get moment that moment is equal to force multiplied by the lower arm because a couple is giving you and this is tension force and this is moment arm that is j d j d so the multiplication of these two will give you a cover you know bending moment so m is equal to tension 
is multiplied by j d clear so from this you can say that p equals to moment divided by j d clear and further we know that t equals to in a bar a s into f s equals to moment divided by j so this is the basic equation now in this equation we we know a very basic relationship that for example j d is remain constant there is narrow changes are occurring along the length of the beam basically along the beam along the length of the beam there is narrow changes but we if we ignore this change changes those changes and we just assume this j d constant then we can directly say that tension is proportional to bending moment clear now this this is the basic relationship clear that along the length of the beam the tension force in a steel the tension force in a steel is directly proportional to moment along the beam length clear so once moment is increasing this means your tension force is increasing so as you know in a simply supported beam the bending moment is maximum at the center so we can directly say that your whole tension force will generate at the next span and thus bending moment from the top you know like this diagram you will achieve so this say that there is the maximum moment that is w is square by a clear so from here you can say that the moment is decreasing so at this point one can say that tension will be proportional to the moment which is right there so as this moment is less than this one so this tension force will also be less than this one if i assume that this is at t max so this t will be less than t max clear and thus you can say that uh, thus you can say that the stress produced at this point in the steel will be lower than the stress produced will be there so if we ensuring that there is our tensile stress in the steel at this point reaches to fy clear reaches to fy i will assume that that stress is equals to fy so this assumption will not be true at this point because there you can say that fs will be fs will not equals to fy clear because the moment at this point is lower and as we can say the tension is directly proportional to bending moment so therefore if you are providing for example if you are providing four bars there and those four bars are you know yielding at this point at this moment because the moment is maximum but at same four bars are continued to this point clear they are continued to this point so these four bars you can't say that they will be yield at this point why because moment is lower is this if you want that these bars could be yield okay if you want that these bar should yield at this point at this point you need to uh you need you know you need a little bit different approach the approach is that that because you need here that moment there this moment should be there okay then they will yield so if this as along the length the moment is decreasing so we can't able to to get this moment value at this point so we have second option and the second option is that that we need to reduce the steel area right there if we reduce the steel area so you must know one other relationship that moment is 
proportional to steel area. Clear? Moment is proportional to the steel area. So therefore, if this moment needs you greater amount of steel at this point, clear? So at this point. So as you can say, the moment is less at this point. So in proportion, in proportion to this moment, if you want to yield this point, you need to reduce this as. So at lower value of M, you will get the lower A is steep. And thus your yielding criteria will be ensured. Clear? And as well as the stress will also be equals to F Y. So basically this is the basic mechanism which you, which you can say give birth to uh, cutting of bars along the length of B. Okay. To achieve this criteria, you can say we cut up the, bar, the bars, okay, to ensure the yielding criteria as well. And as well as it is also important for economy point of view. But remember that whenever you are trying to cut this point, the SCI other criteria is that that if you want this yielding stress, you need to provide sufficient development length because without that development length, that stress you can't able to produce this that stress. One important criteria is also there that for example along the length of the beam if you need you know if you need uh, maximum movement like that where yeah, at this point you need you know uh, there is maximum amount of movement. Yeah. So at this point you need you can say full development length of the bars because you are assuming that F Y stress will be produced. So for yielding of stress, you know you need full development length to provide bars from the center to both sides of the beam. But as one can say, or we can assume that as the moment is here is you can say that is the one third. so as you can see that the moment is if you assume that this is one third moment so or you can say one two moment or you can say 50 percent of that moment so one can say that at this bar needs to be you know, at this bar you need this uh, at this point the bar needs to be hundred percent development length. So as the moment it gets reduced, so beyond, beyond this point one can say that the development length must be equals to eight by two. Okay, because the moment is gets reduced to uh, 50%. So the development in this must need to be reduced in over two. But although this this uh, theoretically you can say, but practically we will provide the full development. Okay. But theoretically this is true. Okay. So basically here the same theory is discussed by the Nelson here and. Uh, one of the most important things which he say that that you must know that that uh, from this bar in this rest of theory he basically uh, in in this basically in this above theory he what he basically says that you know. For a simply supported beam, this is the moment diagram, clear? And uh, one can draw, okay? This is the maximum point, and at this point, basically, uh, he said that as this is the maximum movement point, so you need basically here 100% of steel, clear? 
hundred percentage of steel you need to be required and you can say there is zero percent of steel to be discontinued means at this point you can't discontinue steel okay so once you you move along the length of the beam your movement it get reduced so if i assume that this is my point okay where the movement is get reduced to 50 percent where at the moment it gets reduced to 50 percent mm -hmm. the moment it gets reduced to 50 percent now at this point if you want that so at the moment gets reduced to 50 percent you need to reduce the area of steel at this point to be 50 percent so here you see that if this is a scale you know, this is a scale diagram you need to 50 percent area of steel required and 50 percent of steel to be cut up okay means that at this point you need to cut up steel 50 percent of that steel which is you provided at the max okay and as the support okay at the support you know you need theoretically you need zero percent of steel there because the moment is zero right there okay? so as moment is zero so you theoretically you need it uh, zero percent steel this means hundred percent of steel should be discontinued maybe you can say cut up at this point hundred percent this is a very important diagram okay and at this if this diagram is drawn on a scale you can get the theoretical points okay. and uh, uh, this diagram is basically uh, if this is uh, if you have a candle uh, simply supported beam okay and that simply supported beam is basically subjected with a UDL okay, with a UDL so you can easily get you know the theoretical cut up points from this kind of bar so that bar is basically at a in this graph okay you can see that it is the uh, end the end pages of the Nielsen book and this is graph here this is a kind of scale like now okay and this is the percentage of bar which may be cut up at, at any point okay so if you want to if you want that you are cutting up your 50 percent bars so you just need to select this point and just come down okay once you come down let's say this is this point is uh, 0 0.1 you know this is uh, this point is 0 0.2 so uh, these digits are 10 okay 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so you can say this is around about 50 percent is around about 0 0.1 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, no, 6, 0 0.167 seven round about. So you just multiply that 0 0.167 multiply it with the, with the length of the beam, you can get the point, the theoretical kind of point. You will use this uh, diagram, okay? And if you are, you, you have this uh, not simply supported continuous beams, you continuous beams so then you will use and you are using coefficient method and the continuous beams are arranged in equal spans with a UDL okay so then we will use this chart from this chart one can one can find out so you know one can find out so at these uh, from this charts you can get you know those theoretical points okay we are trying to use this chart inshallah okay. so this this diagram is basically used for simply support okay. and this diagram is basically used for continuous okay there is negative moment okay and there is positive moment these dot dot lines basically show the the actual movement diagram okay and this uh, 
this line basically this full line basically show the movement strength or you can say movement required diagram which is which is which is provided by the steel area you know as we done in uh, Cormac book in 89 so that is the uh, movement strength enveloped diagram okay so it is provided by the steel and it is achieved this movement is basically achieved by the mechanics by the engineering mechanics principle okay and this maximum movement is w square but this diagram is basically uh, on the basis of phi m n which is equal to you know it is equal to uh, a is a point to d minus a over 2 it is constructed on the basis of that formula clear so have same scale is used you know if you are uh, interesting to to find out uh, the cutoff point at which you are cutting your 50 percent positive steel area so just um, draw this line and select this point and come down from there you can select those that those fractions okay multiply those fractions with the length of the beam and you will get the cutoff points distance from the support of the to the cutoff points okay? So this is the same approach. Similarly, the same approach is followed for the negative steel. Uh, you can select 50% steel, and that one can be uh, can be drawn to the to the to the span to the length to the to the beam length, and you can determine that how much distance that uh, cutoff point for the negative steel exists. Okay, so this. This can be achieved by using the movement coefficients you know, as shown by the SIS. I will show you these charts. From these charts, you will just select the 50% of steel if you are interested to cut up, okay, and then select the graph and come down and select this fraction, multiply this fraction with length, which gives you the cut up distance from the face of the support. Okay. So we will we will use this approach, okay. Some practical considerations, you know, we basically uh, used whenever we are calculating theoretical cutoff points. So now we are moving towards our actual cutoff points. You know, from up to you can say up to this point, we are basically concerning with theoretical cutoff points. Now we are approaching to our uh, or actual cutoff points. Okay, theoretical cutoff points is basically you know those there are some restrictions on ACI. Uh, ACI impose some kind of restrictions on theoretical point, and those theoretical points are extended you know for positive bars to towards the span towards the supports by increasing their length. Okay, by some some amount, and then when you increasing your cutoff points, you know your cutoff point distance you know so then you can achieve your actual cutoff point so those theoretical points will be right now uh, those different considerations which will be used okay we will use right there okay so you know in lecture 9 and 8 i will mention you that point that Whenever you are cutting a bar, you know, in a beam, whenever you are cut a bar in a beam, you know, so at this theoretical cutoff point, you know, there is very huge concentration of shear stress, you know, and uh, due to that shear concentration, you know, because their belts. A diagonal crack, spring the diagonal cracks are developed, and due to that crack, the whole tension is transferred to the steel, and no tension is taken by the concrete. And once this crack is built up, the effective cross section area at this point of the beam will get reduced, and as the effective cross section area of the beam gets reduced, so the sharing capacity of the section will be reduced. So 
if you are interesting that this kind of shear stress concentration to be prevented you need to extend you know you need to extend this critical point to the actual point okay and this distance is basically kept uh, uh, equal to d distance or you can say 12 times our diameter effective depth r this may be n n the clear span divided by 16 you know this approach is basically used you select the maximum one way from this you will select the maximum value and add that distance with a theoretical cut up a distance so theoretical point cut up points will be extend to there and then this 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 point this theoretical this cut up point in the is then called a actual cut up point then we can say that this is our although there are some other consideration due to which this point may be extend towards the support but although basically then we can say that this is our actual cut up point okay so this consideration is basically is approach is basically adopted due to shear stress concentration okay now basically this point is adjusted in this uh, shape clear and similarly as a another uh, restriction is that or another fourth criteria is that further reflecting the possible change in peak stress location requires that at least one third of the positive moment steel one fourth in continuous span be continued uninterrupted in on the same phase of the beam a distance at least 6 inches this is a kind of integrity you know they want some kind of integrity you know if i show you this kind of discussion basically this kind of discussion is right there uh and there this is integrate integrity in steel okay uh that practically because so much of time you know that the beams are uh, fed experience this kind of uh rules are imposed due to experience you know due to, due to practical uh barriers of structures those kind of restrictions are imposed by you can say by the ACI and there is the that point okay this comes this is you no know, in the greater is clear although it is in uh, uh, Nielsen book also but this is called structural integrity in reinforcement because uh, structural integrity in reinforcement is necessary you can say for a continuous beam you know if this is your positive steel area and this is your actual cut up points you need to continue one fourth area of this positive steel you know for example a minimum two bars if there are eight bars you need to continue minimum two bars and this continuous area must be equals to or greater than 1/4 of this area you know if are, you, here you are providing 4 square inches area here you need to provide 1 square inches area. okay so this is one criteria this is another criteria it is important for structural integrity similarly they say that there must be some bars minimum two bars must be continuous here must be two bars continuous okay so the for the case of i think for the case of negative steel area there must be one sixth area must be continued and there must be one third area continued okay at this point and similarly if you this is for positive reinforcement clear and uh, this is for you know, this is some other explanation you see that 
this lower bar must be extended at the support up to a distance of 6 inches. Okay, you see that this insertion of the steel of the positive steel area into the support must not be less than uh, 6 inches here. And similarly, one fourth area should be continued. Here you can see that this is one fourth. For simply supported beams, if, this is, if we remove these supports and it is a simply support, then this area will be one third. Clear? Here you can see from the face, from the face, if the negative bars are coming from that side, so you need to continue that steel area, that is the edge two area, should be it should be continued for a distance of LD and the amount of steel right there it's one third area must be continued to a point this point and this is the point of inflection so from the point of inflection you need to continue the steel area for a distance of D 12 dB and L and 16 meaning the flat space and similarly, this is the point of inflection. You need to continue the top area, top steel area. How much top, top steel area? One over third. One over third. Not whole area. Not whole negative area. Just one third area of the negative steel area beyond the point of inflection for a distance of this much. Okay. So this is a kind of structural integrity. And you also need full anchorages, providing full anchorages and similarly you need to extend for 6 inches. Clear? Uh, this is a kind of structural integrity, you know, it is important, okay. Now, here we will discuss, um, the, remember, this is also very important, check, okay. Uh, AC basically, so, uh, do not allow you that you will cut the area in a tension zone. Yeah. If you are cutting steel bar in a tension zone, like you one one can see that this is this is a tension zone. So I see I do not um, uh, allow you that you will cut the bar area in tension zone, but they allow you. Uh, to cut the steel area if there are three criteria to be met okay and these three criteria you can see so we will explain these three criteria in our examples right at this point it is difficult to understand yeah. we will explain these three criteria but not need to be fulfilled these three criteria only one criteria is, is sufficient to fulfill Okay, you have just only to check one criteria from this. So, in, in Nielsen book, these two criteria are basically adjusted. And Lecker uh, basically satisfied this criteria. Clear? So, we check this criteria. And if these criteria are not satisfied, then you cannot, uh, you can say, you cannot cut off the area in the tension zone. Okay. So, this is a very important discussion clear yeah. mm, this is a one of one of the most important diagram you know, and you people must need to be uh, to understand it okay because this is important this diagram is important clear yeah. this diagram is important clear yeah. This is, you know, a moment diagram for a continuous beam, okay? And uh, for a moment diagram for a continuous beam, you know, if it is, if it is a column, you know, these are columns and this is continuous beam. So, most of the time, if you see it's bending moment diagram, it starts from the negative, comes to positive, then come down to negative. Then it goes up positive and then it comes down 
to negative. This is a, this kind of moment diagram. This is positive. This is negative. This is this both are negative. This is positive. This is negative. Clear? This is maximum negative in maximum negative moment. And uh, you know this is uh, you can say this is the maximum. This is the maximum positive moment point. Clear? This is the maximum positive moment and this is the maximum negative clear now this kind this point at which the moment becomes comes out to be zero basically this is called inflection point clear so inflection point is that point where moment change at signs okay from negative to positive or positive to negative clear so this kind of detail you will see there that uh, this is the positive diagram okay and this is the negative diagram this is the inflection point for positive steel and this is the inflection point for negative steel. This is the center line of the beam, clear, and this is the maximum moment capacity. You know, this is the theoretical moment, okay, from the face, okay, from the face of the support, you know. So, there are some important things present in basically in this diagram, clear. So, there are some interesting things okay some interesting uh, you can say knowledge in this diagram clear yeah? what kind of information this diagram provides us that you can see the beam there you know this is the positive steel okay this is basically this is the positive steel you know SA code basically says that if there are total bars there, you know, and you are interested to cut up the bars at this theoretical point, this is your theoretical point, and this is your the point which is at which the maximum moment is happening. So you need to provide your full positive area at this point. Clear? Now you need to extend your whole bars for a for a distance of L. Clear? This distance, this distance, you, know, you can see that this distance is LD equals to LD, both sides, to this side as well and to this side as well. Your full bar must be extended from the P point to the left and to the right, must for a distance of LD. Clear? Now, what impo important information is there? that if it is your theoretical point and it if it is a theoretical point okay so if basically this is this point is your theoretical point clear this is your theoretical cut point so you basically from previous discussion it is I, I clear you that at theoretical point we do not cut the bars we we cut the bars at actual cut up point and where the actual cutoff point, the actual cutoff point is at a distance of d 12 dB or ln by 16. ln by 16 is basically used for negative steel, uh, but you can use it for positive steel, okay? But you get to select the maximum value. So this is the vertical bar point, so you need to extend toward the face for positive steel reinforcement towards the face for a distance of 12 dB B R L L divided by 16. So this point is basically your actual cutoff point. And the distance from the actual cutoff point to the peak point, this one, it must be equals to or must be greater than L D. You, you see here that this distance from the peak point, from the peak point to the actual cutoff point. This distance must be greater than or equal to LD. Okay, your actual cutoff point, or you can say your actual cutoff distance, okay, must be greater than or must be equal to LD. Clear? This is important. Basically, this actual cutoff distance must be equal to or greater than 30. 
clear uh, and the steel area which you cut there and now the continuing area the rest of the bar the rest of the bar area must be greater than you can say one over fourth of the total area or uh, this continuing the rest of continuing area must be equal to or greater than one over fourth of the total positive area clear and that bars must be extended into a support for a distance of six inch clear for a simple span i already mentioned you the continuing area is one third the total for example if you are providing six bars there you are continuing continuing bar this continuing bar must be one third of those bars like one third of six is two so there must and minimum two bars should be there okay minimum two bars larger as possible greater number of bars is possible but minimum two bars should be continued according to this here and similarly uh, for negative reinforcement you see this detail okay that you need the bar which is coming out from this direction there 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 should be continued for a distance of n okay for continued for a distance of n and then uh, basically you can see this is the theoretical cut up point for negative steel if you down this theoretical point to the beam you, you get this point now theoretically you need to cut your negative steel at this point and that will be your theoretical cut up distance okay so you need theoretically you need to cut your bar there but practically due to SCIM restrictions you can't cut the bar at theoretical point you need to to go for actual cut up point now in the negative movement case you need to go beyond or you can say you go opposite from the face of the support there you can you move towards the support there you can go in opposite face of the support for a distance of 12 dB, dB or ln by 6 okay so now this is your actual cutoff point this is your actual cutoff point for a, your negative steel and this is this distance is basically actual cutoff distance you know for negative steel and this distance must be equal to LD or must be greater than LD and and one other information it gives you that the total negative area which you are providing there there must be one fourth area to be continued one fourth area of this total area must be continued for a distance of you know for a distance of uh, LD you know you see there for a distance of LD from the theoretical cutoff point for negative reinforcement the theoretical this is the theoretical point for negative reinforcement so from theoretical cutoff point you need to proceed for a distance of LD okay this these this area will be one fourth this area will be one fourth of this total area means if there are four bar so one four becomes one bar so not one bar just two bar you need to provide two bars continues to this point and this point lies at the distance of ld from the theoretical cutoff point or you can say for you know this is the point of inflection of negative movement so from point of inflection so from point of inflection you need to continue steel this distance for this distance that is ln by 16 d or 12 db like there there we see that from point of inflection no not in this case not in this case this this only occur in negative steel area so in negative steel area you need to provide 
extra stream extra stream beyond the point of inflection beyond the point of inflection for a distance of 12 dB d or l by 16 okay this is and this area must be equals to one third sorry i say one fourth but this is one third clear this extended steel you you see right there You see right there, this one, this one, you see, this steel. This is, this steel is one third, you know, one third. One third steel must be continued for a distance of, you know, this distance, for this distance, which is from the point of inflection of the negative steel for a distance of one third, ln by, ln by 16 are D are 20. We mostly we use this, these two. Correct? And from theoretical cutoff point for a distance of LD. Okay. This is a very important information. This is detailing information. It must be ensured. ACI says this must be ensured. So in this diagram you can say a very important information. Okay. You you must need to clarify yourself. By this diagram clear mm. this diagram basically provides you some useful information okay and this is you can say these are the ACA coefficients for cut up parts for positive as well as for negative steel now, when these these coefficients are used most in field uh, basically we use these coefficients most of the people use okay even your neighbors do not no about the ACI, but they use this these coefficient. They cut these bars. They say uh, one third, one fourth, one third, one fourth. So this these coefficient works out. Okay, for cut up bars or for bent up bars, both these are used. You know what? What these are coefficient? There are some restriction of ACI that these bands must be uniform. This this band length must be equals to this. There are some uh, you know, I think so. This is 10%, 15% difference in these in these um, loading as well as in space in span lens exist. So SA allow you. Otherwise, SA do not allow you. Okay. And these beams must be subjected to UDLs. Okay. Not point loads. So if these beams are subjected to UDL and these spans are uniform. You can use these coefficients also. Okay. So for negative reinforcement, you see that this length L1 by 4, this 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 will be the actual cutoff point. And this is one third, one third for for a detail, it is one add for this this length word by add. And uh, this length word by add. The bar should be extended for a six inches, you know. The bar should be extended for a six. This is for bent up bar. You need to bend bar at a 45 degree angle. Distance of L1 divided by 7 and 1 in this length. And this is L1 by 4. You need to bend bar at a distance of L1 by 4. Okay. And similarly, you need to extend the bars for 6 inches. So, this diagram is also very useful, but they work for uniform spans and uniform UDL loading. Clear? Not for other type of loading. Clear? So, basically, these are some special requirements near the point of zero. Huh. Uh, mm, basically, this diagram is very useful. Diagram. In this diagram, there is very, very important information. Okay. And uh, I would like to extend uh, the this lecture. Uh, I would like to stop this lecture attend at the, up to this point, okay? Because from this point, this is a new topic, okay? This is a new topic. Because this is the point of inflection. And now at point of inflection, you need to provide some sort of special arrangement, okay? So, we will discuss it in lecture, lecture 11, okay? Because inshallah, we will continue our lecture beyond this. This diagram, clear? 
and uh, you will see that what this is a kind of uh, other restrictions from ACI okay and after that inshallah we will start up now numericals okay so basically in maker also uh, explain these criteria these structural integrity that how much uh, your bar should be extended so i think so we also go with regular as well and uh, after that inshallah we will read numericals so this is also explained by the migrator okay now these rules will also be present there okay so one important thing which we mentioned there because only one of these need to be satisfied the other recommends same thing i will explain you that these three criteria cannot you need to satisfy you need just one criteria to be satisfied okay effect of discontinuity bars i explain you that when you cut the bar there is tension shear stress concentration so how we cover it okay so basically i explain all those topics okay also you can you can uh, read these detail in this book also in very important okay and very detailed where make record represent more than um, yes this is the same question which i did in lecture 9 so same question he starts his uh, you know he starts the cut up point and cut up cut up locations of cut up bars from this discussion okay he, he 330 is the maximum and they provide basically five number eight bars and then they cut two bars okay and uh, you can see this is the cross section at this point and this is the cross section at mid you have five bars and it supports you to three bars sand diagram okay they cut they they cut two bars and they just determine the moment capacity which is 250 now for 215 they determine the cut up distance that is 4.09 from same equation which i did in lecture 9 clear and he explained it in a more detailed way as Cormac do not did this diagram this is the envelope diagram okay movement strand diagram you can say and uh, your movement strand diagram must be within this movement envelope okay the dotted line show the actual movement diagram and uh, continuous line show you showing you the movement strand diagram so that is the same example which i did in lecture 9 so you can uh, better understand if you read this example okay i gave you short summary of those uh, lecture okay so there is a it is in a more here and also tell you that the the strength at d will be from c will be at a distance of n okay i will explain these things okay so mm, this is the shear effect okay when you cut the bars shear cracks will start in developers so how you can adjust their problem how you can justify that problem okay so there's no discussion are there okay mm, after that inshallah we will we will in lecture 11 we will extend this lecture okay we start from this point this discussion is basically present no we start from we start from this point where okay? development of bars in positive moment regions this diagram basically what what kind of information is diagram these are very most important detail in this diagram okay they are very most important detail okay they basically showing you that when you, you are providing your full bars five number eight bars it gives you this diagram and once you cut up your bars your movement capacity will get reduced from that point to this distance here you can see this line basically this dotted line you are you are you are watching you are seeing this is for number eight five number eight bars and this diagram is basically you can say this this dotted line once you cut up your bars so your your movement diagram is there but remember basically this this line give you the stresses okay this give you the stresses there are stresses is lower because there are five number at bars stresses are lower once you cut the bar your stress become increased why now the tension become increased and within d dash and d there are five bars once you cut 
the bar there are just only three bars so on three bars movement become increased tension become increased and due to tension increase the stress will increase so therefore it goes to from the dash to c dash and you can see okay so this is a very great information okay and due to this stress increase shear stress become increased and due to that we need some sort of other arrangement okay inshallah we will address those things in this topic and after that inshallah we will deal with okay so that will be inshallah our last theoretical topic okay after that inshallah we will continue this so for this time i would like to stop my lecture okay and then in lecture inshallah we will cover this just theoretical lecture okay if you have any question any doubts uh, basically i i welcome okay and i i gave you my introduction as well so you can contact me and you can uh, take any kind of suggestion from me regarding